Adventure is in my blood. Finding treasures big or small and having fun is what it's all about. With my wife Melissa and our three kids, life is pretty full. But there isn't a mountain we can't climb together. This isn't your ordinary antique store. My name is Alex Archibald and this is Curiosity. Inc. I'm home, honey. Hi guys and welcome to today's episode. Well, before I get into the episode today, I have a little story to share with you about what led me here today. Uh, I'm in my store yesterday morning. A uh, gentleman walks in, we're chatting. He's got an absolutely fantastic looking jukebox. It's beautiful, uh, working perfect. He said he might consider selling it, but wants $6,000 for it. Now I said that's, you know, I couldn't pay that. It was a little bit high for me. Um, and he walks into the back of the store and he's shopping with his wife and, uh, and hopefully having a good time. <laughs> um, so as I'm kind of bummed out thinking about how nice it would be to have a jukebox in the store, um, as those customers are in the back, another gentleman walks in and he says, uh, my father passed away and we've got a jukebox in the basement and we will just give it away for free if you can come get it out of the basement. What are the odds of that happening? And it ends up being pretty similar and in, in vintage and design to the jukebox that, that I was bummed out about. So talk about serendipity. So he leaves, I set up an appointment to come and look at it uh, today, which is where I am now. Uh, <laughs> the other fellow walks out and uh, we're chatting and uh, I think he just couldn't believe that in the moment that he talked to me and walked to the back of my store that I'd acquired a very similar jukebox <laughs> in that amount of time. But that's how life works. And now here I am, uh, ready to come pick up this jukebox with my friend Jim today. We're gonna try and get it loaded up and brought back to the store. Um, so this should be exciting. We'll, we'll see what it's like. But uh, the price was sure, right? That's for sure. Oh, so you've got a pool table set up and everything down here. So this is it. Wurlitzer. Do you know what year it is? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. It looks like uh, mid 50s. And it's the type people like that have all the. Oh, is that right? Yeah, you can see all the different movements. Now, this was your dad's machine originally? Well, he bought it at an auction. Okay. A charity auction. And did he ever, ever have it up and running? or? Oh, yeah, it was running um, until recently for some reason. It'll... Now, what happens is it loads the records and then immediately unloads them. Oh, okay. But no, I used to play. And uh, you're moving, are you? That's the reason for getting rid of it? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, yeah, this should definitely do the trick. And I think this should have no trouble standing up in the back of the ambulance either. Oh. Um, so I think we'll be okay there. Okay, I've come outside to move my ambulance around to the backyard. The jukebox really doesn't look that bad. I think it's got lots of promise and potential. So we'll get the car moved around back and uh, Jim should be here soon. We'll get it loaded up. Okay, got it up out in the basement with a lot of help from Jim. I'm just pulling forward so there's enough room to uh, stick this thing in the back. Oh, here goes nothing. Okay, it's in the store. It's all dusty right now, but overall the condition is really, really good. Uh, Jim's just run out to get some tools. We're gonna try plugging this in and see what it does as it is right now. But we're thinking with a little bit of cleaning and a little bit of TLC, we might be able to get this thing up and running. The jam is here. So what are you looking at down here to see? Well, firstly, money. Ha. Ah. Hey, You're richer than you think, Alex. It's already up 20 cents. Yeah. Anyway, it's a beautiful jukebox. Uh, it's dusty and a little bit dirty and probably needs a good cleaning and uh, lubrication. And I think it'll work just fine. Okay, well, I have faith in you. Jim's made pretty much every other mechanical thing I've had in here. Pinball machines, shooting games work. And you've worked on jukeboxes lots before, right? Yeah, this is actually very close to one of the first jukeboxes I ever worked on. And... Um, 
it was just sort of a, a piece that we put out on rental uh, just to create atmosphere in a, in a gallery. So, so it's, you've worked on one like this before. Now, what would Indeed. have been up top here? I'm sorry? What? Well, that would have been a space for the operator's license. Oh, uh, I see. Often municipalities would see coin-operated devices, whether it was jukeboxes or pinball machines as, as work of the underworld or something. Or gambling devices. Made sure, to tack, made sure to tax them and tax them at a, at a rather exorbitant rate. Uh, it wouldn't be uncommon in the 1960s for a, a city like Edmonton to have a, a license fee for a jukebox of uh, 40 or $50 because... It's a lot back then. Yeah, in today's dollars, that, that's pretty healthy and uh, would certainly uh, preclude a lot of places having equipment. So Well, thankfully that's not the case now. If we can get this up and running, I can let people come in and play yeah, some yeah. tunes. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. And the jukebox is, is uh, playing and everything. it's in the place it should be. It should float like this nice and light. On the springs. Yeah, uh, it makes the record sound, improves the sound of the record dramatically. Right, so we've got one spring there. One spring here, and then two in the front. Right. But when you're moving them, you'll often find bolts or some type of device that will lock this down so it's not just floating. Right. So okay. when we were moving it and laid it down in the back of your ambulance, uh, this is just floating and it could have, I mean, there's not a lot of room for it to fall over or anything, but for the weight to shift in a direction that it doesn't, uh, normally go, it could break this, this piece up here yeah, or, or break a whole bunch of stuff. Okay. So we locked it down with these bolts and then it's gotcha, okay. getting it ready to play. And you've got two more springs there that have to go on. Those are for the front? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to get out of your way. At this point, I'm essentially like the kid holding the flashlight for his dad. <laughs> Jim's working away there and I'm holding the hood up on the front of this thing so it doesn't fall on his head. Spring number three and four. Nice, nice and bouncy. And he said that they put a new needle on it at some point, 15 years ago or so. He yeah. said he went to uh, Don's Vending and got a new needle, so that needle should be okay still. If he's only used it so. twice since then, yeah. uh, it's not enough to wear out a needle. Yeah. Let's see, what are the last songs that we're playing on this jukebox? Linda Ronstadt, John Lennon, Tony Orlando and Don, Elton John. So I'm guessing that the last time this was probably in use at, let's say, a restaurant or bar was probably in the 1970s, maybe mid to late 70s, based on some of these songs that are in here. Um, Elvis Presley, Cat Stevens, another Saturday night, and look, room for lots more. Um, you can still buy these little tabs online. Um, so you can put in your own songs and, and get, get it so it matches what you've got going there. But we'll, uh, I guess Jim's back there right now. Are you, you ready for the big reveal? Yeah, okay, you gonna plug it in? Yeah. Okay. okay, Jim has plugged it in. Oh, we've got lights. And, oh, stuff's happening. Okay. But I wonder if any of the records got jostled around during the, uh... so it, it moved, but I think that record looks like it's a little bit jammed. Okay, so we got it to pick up a record, it started to play, and then it instantly rejected it and put it away. Um, Jim thinks that there's, well, he knows that there's a little contact in there that tells you when it's the end of the record, and that's engaging at the wrong time. So right now, the problem with this machine seems to be that it was thinking it was at the end of the record. Let's see if it selects one. Okay, up goes the record. Starts to play and then rejects it. Like a junior high kid at the prom. It got rejected. The switch, you can tell by the sound, is working as it should be, but uh, it could just be shorted open. So 
I need to get in there and disconnect one of the wires to see if indeed uh, that's the problem. Right. So that'll be a, a trick because uh, it's all attached to that panel, right? It's kind of hidden back there. Yeah, it's tucked away. Okay, now for copyright reasons, I can't play the whole thing, but this song is playing on there right now, and uh, it's playing a little bit slow, so we'll have to do a little uh, repair to that. Okay, Jim, you gotta tell the whole world, what was the problem with this machine? Uh, on the back of every jukebox, there's a button that'll cancel a record, so if a record is sticking or, or not ending, or there's something wrong with it, right. uh, the restaurant or bar could just walk up and press the button and it would cancel the record go on to the next one. Okay. On this one, this button was actually frozen in, and I'd forgotten, I've seen a few of them where, for some reason, this button gets scratched or dirty or something, and it just gets frozen in. So the cancel button was stuck in. Yeah. So now, essentially, we have a working jukebox. It's playing a little bit slow, but you're saying that my, my bands... You need two rubber bands, and there's only one on here. And uh, you just shape. sort of feel it that it's 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 kind of hard. Yeah. So yeah. all I have to do now is order a couple new, basically rubber bands off the interweb somewhere. Yeah. And this thing should be hundred percent. You'll be close. Yeah. Uh, I know when it's uh, playing, it's it's very grindy sounding. You know, you hear a lot of yeah, and things should be a little bit smoother. So. <laughs> So Jim has been working on this the whole time. I see you finally That's decided to hold that up. I've, I've been replaced by a stick. <laughs> he's built, he's got a, a, a prop rod now. Um, the speed seems to be better. But you've discovered a few other things that need doing on it. Yeah. Okay. I'm not entirely trusting of this. Do you thing, want me to? I, mean, I can just keep okay. my hand up. It's fine. It's, it's all right. I'm I won't read of knocking it or something. I won't jiggle it. Okay. So what did what do we learn about this machine? Anyway, uh, the one thing is it's missing the coin neck. Uh, I also, when I first saw it, I thought this was actually stuck way down the machine, at it, and I thought you were missing the part. This is the coin return for coins that would get stuck. But there's no mech on it. No, I have one that I can. Oh, okay. Well, you're a handy you guy to know. Um, Anyway, it's set up for free play right now. We'll have to figure out uh, how to take that off, or if you want, just leave it at free play. Okay. Um, this lower bulb was in, was burnt out and also missing the starter, so I just took the one from the top. It's much easier to replace than this one. Okay. So we'll get another light bulb, another starter, and that will be fine. Uh, cleaned and lubricated everything. Should have left it open for you. You've taken another uh, shot and seen the difference in uh, how it appears. No, that's okay. There. But anyway, uh, the problem is uh, I would suggest still the belts simply because of their age. And also, I believe it is the needle because uh, I initially thought it was the wires, the wire that leads. It's a sort of a shielded cable. Right. So there it is from almost trash to now a working and looking fantastic 1959 Wurlitzer. Thanks so much for watching today's episode. If you haven't subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit your bell so you get notifications when new videos come up. And we'll see you all soon. Bye for now.